Hello Virgo, welcome to Aries season. Time when Mars moves into Gemini and Saturn, Pluto, and Jupiter retrogrades begin. Let's see what else comes out. Let's see what comes out for you. Okay, this one. Boom, there it is. The Magician. Whatever you want, Virgo, now is the time to absolutely start planting those seeds to your season, right? We've got a good six months ahead of us. Plant the seeds now. Make the phone calls, send the text messages, do the thing, make the list, whatever you got to do, um, so that when your season comes, you can harvest the reward. Magician is powerful. There's no doubt about it. It's aggressive, even. It's honestly even aggressive. It's where you reach up into the ether, right, with your mind, with your emotions, and you dictate, you tell the universe what it is you want. Um, financial goals, romantic goals, uh, you know, career, family, anything in your life. It is genuinely yours for the taking. And because Aries season is just a little strange, like I think we got a little bit gypped on the Aries energy this year through Mars, through Gemini, and now the sun is in, or um, Gemini, Mar, Mars through Aries, and then uh, Aries season is here now. But there's like, it's kind of like driving with the brakes on, right? Like you're, you're still moving forward and things are still happening. And yes, Aries season can be really aggressive, but now retrogrades are happening and there's still spicy stuff going on. So it's still like cautious. So while you're in this weird, cautious feeling, this weird, cautious energy, you might as well put things to work, right? You might as well put the energy to work and just like put it out there. If you're wanting love, money, anything, tell the universe, like, this is what I want. And to start really understanding what it means to feel as though you already have those things to feel like it's almost like a gift from your future self even, you know, to feel what it, what it feels like to, to, f to have the, th sorry, now I'm just repeating myself. Blah, Mercury retrograde on Neptune. What can I say? <laughs> okay. Okay. Three of coins productivity. See, when Mars moves into Gemini, which is, can be unnerving for a Virgo, actually, I think, right? Gemini, Virgo energy, ah, like, unless you natally have a lot of Gemini, you'll probably handle it just fine. But if you don't have any Gemini in your chart, you'll probably feel very uncomfortable. You're going to feel like I got to do stuff, I got to be creative, I got to go talk to people, I got to, and you're going to like really be wanting to push yourself in really substantial kind of ways. And the three of coins suggests now might be a time to explore, collaborate, talk to people, get new ideas, get different perspectives, counsel with someone if you need to. Like you might as well do all the legwork. But um, see, even the magician is kind of like the preliminary stuff. It's not really the most active in terms of the physicality. It's active mentally and emotionally, and it's active through meditation and working with the ether. But in terms of bringing it and channeling it into the real world, still, we haven't quite, quite crossed that bridge yet. We're getting there. We just haven't quite crossed that bridge. I think the past three months have been so critical because now we know what we really want. I suspect that the past few months, there's been a lot of push-pull. Do I want this? Do I want that? Do I want to be with this person? Do I not? Do I want to grow this business? Do I not? Like, do I invest? Do I not? What's the market doing? What's so-and-so doing? You know, there's just was so much that was dependent on other things. And now you finally whittled it down to what's really important to you. So what is really important? What's really worth your time? And now you're like, okay, now I know what I want to manifest. Now I know what I want to put out there. Now I know what seeds I want to plant. Because I'm not going to plant 40 seeds and 10 to 40 different things if I, can, if I only need to do like three things. Let's not overwork here, right? Let's work smart, not hard, okay? Hmm. Are you taking on the Queen of Swords energy, Virgo? Very Libra-esque of you could be tapping into the decision-making side of the Queen of Swords too. What do I do? And still there's an analytical vibe, 
considering each side individually, considering each option individually, and determining whether or not something is for you. There may be a little bit of oscillation going back and forth, weighing the pros and the cons, especially when you have opinions from other people. Okay, what are they saying? Right, a lot of consideration. But ultimately, I don't see her as being hindered by her consideration. You know, like when she's reversed, we call it wishy-washy, we call it indecisive, we call it unable to make a decision maybe even, like completely just can't do it, can't commit to one thing or the other. But she's she's upright, she's not like that. She's just discerning and discriminating. So she's gonna do her due diligence, but when it's time, she's gonna do it. And that's where the hero fat comes in, such a beautiful energy for any reading because it's substance. It's power, right? It's Taurus. It has a lot to do with our true essence, our true sense of awareness, this awareness that we are an awareness, this awareness that we are a soul, that we have a much, 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 much longer story. It's not just this one teeny tiny lifetime, right? It's many, many, many lifetimes, both forward, backwards, upwards, downwards, you know, however many multiverses we have layered on top of each other. Like there's so many lifetimes. So Given that, given that extremely high level perspective, does this one little decision really matter? You know, and some of you may have big things on the docket and other things, not so much. But when you do it from the awareness of how big you actually are, how big your existence actually is, then easy peasy for a queen of swords. Just cut it off, right? Just cut it off, make the decision, send the email, say the words, whatever you got to do. See, it's eighth house season. I can't not make it big. I can't not make it deep. You know, it's, it's just the nature of Aries season for you guys. And because you are naturally a hermit and eighth house, so connected with Scorpio and it's Mars ruled and Aries is Mars ruled. Like you guys are soldiers when it comes to depth. You are soldiers when it comes to looking within yourself. You're not avoidant in any way. You take the time, you take the energy, you take the effort and do that inner work just naturally, just by being a Virgo. It's like your birthright kind of thing. That's just what you do. So after all these many years of doing the inner work, hopefully you've discovered what you actually are. Hopefully you've discovered that powerful force within you, what it means to be a universe. How can you practically apply the idea that you are a universe? You know, how can you practically apply that? What does that mean for this little decision that's needing to be made? What does it mean for your future? There's no need for anxiety if you know what it means to be a universe. So there's been healing. I think Pisces season brings that out. Can be through via some kind of catharsis, you know, maybe there was some purging going on, some emotional purging, maybe there was some really, really cutting out an area of your life that has not been serving you for a very long time. Maybe it was walking away quietly, not acknowledging and giving absolutely no energy to something. And yes, disappointment, but not sadness. Hopefully not sadness. Uh, Disappointment, yes. Because it's kind of a letting go of like all of the what ifs. Well, what if it had worked out? What if it did move forward? What if I did make that money? What if I did get that promotion? And you can go down the list and you can be hypercritical all you want. But at the end of the day, it doesn't change where you are right now. So I don't think Virgo is really spending that much time in the past. I think what Virgo is doing this month is digging in deeper, deeper than they already do and extracting their new direction. It is a life-changing monumental time for you guys. I, I, I do believe that. I'm seeing that in the Virgos in my life. I think life is getting easier and thereby, or and therefore the decisions are getting easier. Because the stuff that you've been working on, okay, you've, you've already seen the darkness within yourself, so couldn't get any worse than that. And it wasn't even really that bad. You know, no matter what trauma you had as a child or whatever, it's just, it's, 
you're here now because of everything you went through. And I, I think that the Three of Swords reverse indicates a sense of gratitude for that because now it's weakening its hold on you, right? When it's upright, it can be still really painful. But when it's upside down, there's an acceptance factor. Acceptance in and of itself is cathartic can absolutely just accept and move on and we do not retain karmic implications because there's no trying to change it there's no trying to change yourself so you're shedding karma right you're shedding karma you are tapping truly into your deepest levels of authenticity opens up the doors for a lot of opportunity because when you are in a state of peace when you are in a state of self love and self acceptance um, and in a state of gratitude therefore the state of abundance gratitude is like the gateway to abundance right we all know that when you're in that state of mind Things can't help but come. And I think that you've been feeling good things coming. I think you've been feeling this freedom. And the freedom and the joy and the passion, it's just becoming stronger and stronger and stronger. When I say passion, just passion for like living, passion for life, passion for being outside, passion for gardening, passion for painting and all the creative things that you do, passion for doing the dishes. Like for me as a Virgo, like one of my favorite things to do is create a mess and then like clean it up, right? Like cook and not clean and then clean it up later because it's kind of a, a form of meditation for me, housework, doing laundry, vacuuming, that kind of thing. I love cleaning, but I also got to kind of create a little bit of a mess too um, in order to have something to clean. So there's a quality of just doing the things that you love simply because you love them. And when you do that, so many more doors open. The Wheel of Fortune is kind of neutral, right? It doesn't really care whether it deliv delivers good things or delivers bad things. Its job is just simply to turn over. Its job is just to deliver. And it's all based on your energy, which you're working on here. Like you're the one putting this amazing stuff out there. So is it any wonder that when you're putting out amazing things, you're putting out the requests for opportunities and romantic partnerships and all of that, is it any wonder that it's going to come to you? Of course not. It's not a mystery. It's not magical. It's not mystical. It's science, right? It's the way it works. And three of cups is like, man, Virgo, are you just having a good time? Or maybe this is a month where you can just have a good time. Eighth house activity be damned. I am just going to enjoy my life. Because of course, you know who you are. And you're operating from that space this month. The sun illuminating from like way down in, in your psyche. So like, yeah, you are operating from the darkest depths of your soul. And when you do that, magical things can happen. There is no chance that Virgo is not tapping into their authenticity this month. Like there's no chance. There's no fakeness at all. So you go out with your friends. You have a good time. Okay. If you're dealing with some interesting friends or friends that might not necessarily be serving you so well, it's probably a good month to decide whether, like, whether or not it's good to stay. Because sometimes the Three of Cups can manifest in terms of gossip rumors, uh, people passing things down the grapevine. I don't necessarily see that Virgo is going to be participating in that kind of activity too much. You know, I don't. I think that you're going to be turning your back on negative and non-productive conversations and negative and non-productive relationships, friendships also included in that, co-worker relationships included in that. And I think you'll find your peace and your happiness only with those that you can genuinely trust. And there's probably going to be a significant number of people that you decide to just no longer put anything else into it. Especially, I don't know why I'm feeling like a co-worker thing. 
Why am I feeling that? I don't know. Coworkers specifically, like not getting involved in any of that office politics stuff or even removing yourself from toxic clients too. If you work for yourself or you have your own business or something and really just being like, we're only going to do business with people that we really like, period. <laughs> because that's just it's my life. Like, I don't want to mess with my life. This is my life and I'm not going to waste my life anymore. Okay. So, so Yeah. There could be a few relationships on the chopping block. Okay, Page of Cups. Okay, so Mercury re is still retrograde, but he won't be retrograde for most of April, right? He's, he's working his way into station. He'll be moving forward again the next several days. Um, or, I'm sorry, I don't remember the date off the top of my head. Don't quote me on the dates. <sighs> Page of Cups reversed. You know, there may be some communication stuff. Or maybe even you just don't hear or receive the kind of thing that you're wanting to hear or receive. And sometimes this can actually be a big favor. Normally when this doesn't come through, the apology, the text message, the thing, normally when that happens, it's for the best. It's universal intervention. That's one of the things that the Wheel of Fortune represents. The universe or the force of life itself you know, because if you're putting out good things, then this shouldn't be coming through. It honestly shouldn't be. So here you are doing this. Please don't expect that from the person that you're, I don't know, hoping to hear from or wishing you had some kind of closure with or whatever. Like, don't even stress about it. Don't even think twice about it. I think maybe that's part of what this Queen of Swords, the oscillation, right? The, the Libra quality. Do I worry about it? Do I think about it? Do I reach out to them? Do I do it? You don't. Like, just don't. You are not responsible here. I don't think often I see a Page of Cups as being someone that needs to come to you, not you going to someone else, unless there's some kind of directionality. Normally, that's how I see it. So... The Wheel of Fortune is at work, so if this doesn't come through, know that this is still operating on the on the back end. So it's not about this. It's more about this. This is a major arcana, so much more important and so much more powerful than this could ever be. So don't worry about that. That is not a thing. Let's do one more, and then I'll put the camera down the way I do. A lot of major arcana, four out of the nine. This is an Aquarius card. So just so you know, okay, we're getting kind of Aries with the magician. Could be dealing with another Virgo or a Gemini with that one too. We're getting a Taurus energy. We're getting a Sagittarius energy with a Wheel of Fortune and also an Aquarian energy. So just putting those signs out there. So this is the aha moment, the light bulb turning on, the awakening, right? And we have multiple, multiple layers of awakening that happen in our lives. It's not just all about one boom. Okay. Now you're enlightened all of a sudden it happens in layers. So this is just one more layer getting peeled back as what would be expected by eighth house season. Chiron now in your eighth house as well. So there's a lot of healing that's going to be taking place. And sometimes healing does require the exposure of wounds but I, I think that you've made your way through the brunt of that Chiron going back and forth through Aries and then back into Pisces and then back again. Um, and so now, like for sure, within the past year, right, since this time last year and now and now this this year throughout the course of the last 12 months, you've you've changed so much. You're so much more intelligent now. You're so much more emotionally intelligent now and spiritually intelligent like you're a different person. And yet there's still more to go. So whatever happens, okay, this is a very like kind of broad spectrum reading just simply because I'm not, I'm getting too many major arcana and I'm not getting like the person or the people that you're really dealing with, with the exception of this and also the exception of just a lot of activity. <laughs> so if you're focusing a lot at work, like I said, might not be the best time to like pull triggers, but certainly don't waste time like getting ideas and gathering information. Okay, so let's turn these down now. Hold on, I'll fix this just one second. So you can see. Okay. 
Let's pull out the two from this other deck. Okay, adjustment. Oops, or justice rather. And the three of wands. See, these go so well together because this is about planting the seeds and this is about the patience that it takes goes well with the wheel of fortune as well because this is a card of prosperity okay it's a card of honor and dignity which was a big thing for leo last month um, but also you guys because you've got leo in the 12th so dignity maintaining your composure of course the libra energy through balance and also just like being diplomatic maybe there is a situation that you do need to be a little bit diplomatic about you know maybe you do need to be forthright and honest but also not be a jerk about it too and while you have your own stuff going on your own work stuff your own life stuff you're still healing you'll still work you're still working through a lot of things well, then there's also the fun aspect of everything and then the friends aspect of everything. So it is multifaceted, multiple areas of life coming online here for you and uh, requiring your attention. So it's dynamic, okay? So let's focus on, okay, well, we're getting a card of temperance. I wasn't clarifying anything specific, so we'll just pull it out here. Actually, sorry, I forgot to do this. I got an astrology deck called the Blue Moon Astrology. And I've been pulling out one of these two just for fun because it's kind of a cool deck. So you can see it. Okay. Void of course moon. <laughs> Missing. Yeah, I love the, the terminology void of course. Because I think that's kind of where this season is, is kind of taking us. Um, because nothing is really channeled in one specific direction. The Mars and Gemini quality certainly going to get, plus Gemini is your 10th house, right? So there is going to be a lot of cardinal vibes, but with a mutable undertone, right? With the Gemini, or excuse me, a, a lot of mutable vibes with the cardinal undertone being in the 10th house. So it's like, go, 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 but also wait and see. And so here we are. Where is this all going? We don't quite know yet. So much change. I mean, it's been rapid change for the past couple of years now. And now I think 2019, we're really feeling as though we're getting our hooks in the ground for real. And we're about ready to start running. We're about ready to start sprinting in our life and in our, and even if that's like sprinting in terms of just living a peaceful life, it doesn't mean you're going out and doing all this stuff. It just means allowing life to take you where it needs to go. And so now we've got our hooks in the ground where we've got our grip and we're ready to push off at a moment's notice. We're just kind of waiting for the starter pistol, you know? And the more peaceful you can be, temperance, the more at peace, the more moderate you can be, the more alert you'll be to hear the starter's pistol. I mean, that's what I'll call the, the reading, a starter's pistol. Because I think that's kind of what it is. Waiting for that gun to fire. Let's look at the magician now, yeah? Hmm. I do like the Capricorn energy for you, though, actually. Capricorn and Taurus just giving you that grounding. What did I say? Hooks on the ground. And here he's got his talons there, right? It's kind of what you've got going on. Ready to jump at a moment's notice, but not in a rush to do so. Nice Cardinal Aries energy coming through for you. Beautiful. Six of Coins. Let's look at the Queen of Swords now. Oh, okay. Well, Three of Swords coming out again. Hopefully you're not viewing yourself as broken. You know, be careful of what the story that you feed yourself. No one's broken. No one is so psychologically traumatized that they can't, you know, really move away and they can't grow spiritually. There's always new levels. Always, always, always new levels. Okay, see, there's the caution coming through. Even the, the page of coins, I'm like, yeah, there's, 
a slow moving vibe coming through. Let's see what else. There seems to be a confidence issue, Virgo. Did something happen that took your confidence? Something happened and it created some kind of insecurity that's really not needed or necessary. We'll talk about that. There's a lot more to that in the comprehensive. We'll go deeper. Are you fighting off the Wheel of Fortune a little bit? Are you fighting off the starter's pistol? Oh, there's the queen again. Are you fighting off the starter's pistol, Virgo? Are you kind of dreading that moment when it's going to kick in? Maybe you're just really happy in this interesting space. Okay, wow, a lot coming through. I was clarifying the three of coins. All these came through. Two knights. Sagittarius, Pisces energy. I do think Gemini, the Mars in Gemini transit is going to be unnerving. And you're going to feel like you got to go, you got to go, you got to go. There's a lot of Sagittarius energy coming out for, so for some of you. So you may be dealing with some, one of like if I can talk this is definitely a mercury retrograde across Neptune Blech. you may definitely be dealing with a Sagittarius okay we're getting an Aquarius now oh, three of coins reversed see I think that this particular social circle is counterproductive like it's okay to go out and have fun and do all of that but be sure that you are still like gathering I'm getting like gathering Make sure that you're still gathering information you're still gathering stuff knowledge ideas new perspectives okay a king you're dealing with a king who's afraid to show you that they're a king that was a theme for someone else too I think that was Leo Okay, I'm not going to pull more. Let's do adjustment. Adjustment. Okay, Empress. Beautiful. Another card of Libra. I love this card for Virgo, though, actually, if I'm being honest. Because I she reminds me of Demeter, right? The goddess um, that's kind of your goddess. Okay. Okay. And here we have this. Mars and Gemini. Oh. <laughs> okay, so this is where we're going to begin with the comprehensive. If you want to join me, the link will be down below on the web, uh, in the description box. If not, then I will absolutely see you next month. Okay? Thank you so much, guys. Bye-bye.